Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Layla, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about simple but common money mistakes. I've been passionate about finances for a very long time. I've made quite a few financial mistakes. I actually have a couple of videos on these. I will link those videos down below because you can learn from my mistakes, assuming you haven't already made those mistakes, but a lot of them you probably haven't. I've also been a financial coach for over a year now, and I have noticed some common things amongst my clients. Not all of these things come from things I've noticed from my clients, but also just from listening to podcasts or seeing other things that people have gone through or you know things on reddit that come up in the finance subreddits or on youtube videos etc so all of these are pretty simple mistakes but also very simple to fix so let's go ahead and jump right into them all right mistake number one your investments are not actually invested I have seen and heard of quite a few people go through this and it is just a waste of time and your money and something you definitely want to check on so if you are somebody who has a roth ira or even a 401k any sort of investment account make sure that your money is actually invested the best way to figure this out is based off of the amount of money that you've put in has it increased or decreased over the last few months so if the money that you've put in there is about what you still have in there and you you've been investing for you know a few months or more then you probably don't have your money invested. It may have increased a little bit, but that's probably because it is gaining some interest in that settlement fund, but your money probably isn't invested. Even if you just have $100 in there, you should see it going up and down, assuming it's invested into the market. You could also call whoever it is that you're investing with, Vanguard, Fidelity, and ask them, is my money actually invested? That's a quick way to find out, and they can help you to get your money invested, but really it should be pretty simple. It if you have money in your account, then you should immediately be able to invest that money and you can choose where you want it to go. So just to clarify that a little bit further, for example, if you have a Roth IRA, a Roth IRA is just a Roth IRA. So this is, this is a retirement account for you to invest in. But within that Roth IRA, you have to be invested in something. So I have my Roth IRA with Vanguard, but that doesn't mean anything because I could just put my money into Vanguard and have it sit in my account, but it's not actually going to help me in the future. So I have to choose where I invest that money. So my Roth IRA is invested all into VTSAX, which is a specific investment type and that allows my money to grow or decrease just depending on the market so just be careful about that make sure you double check if you haven't noticed any changes into your account and take care of that asap you definitely don't want to go months and years without that money actually being invested because you will be thinking that you're investing your money and doing the right thing but that is not going to benefit you mistake number two is not creating a budget on a monthly basis so if you're the type of person who does create a budget, not everybody does, then you should be creating that budget monthly. So I've worked with clients that were surprised to find out that we are gonna create a budget for them every single month. And the reason you need to do this is because everything's gonna look different from month to month. So it's you don't have to just create that budget and stick with that for the full year. You're gonna have to change things. There's some months where you have gifts to buy or some months where you have to pay for something more expensive or home improvements or you know that that month you're going to be going to the doctor so just because you have a general idea of where your money should be going every single month it's important to create this every single month so that you know where your money is going and you can plan things out accordingly i know this sounds like a no-brainer but i have seen people think that you don't need to make it every single month but just be aware that your budget will change every single month and you should be recreating your budget every month in order to make the most of your money mistake number three is thinking it's all or nothing and this also relates to your budget i'm going to give a similar example first so when it comes to weight loss or somebody trying to follow a healthier diet or be more fit whatever the case is it's very similar to finances so when somebody is trying to eat clean and let's say they're starting on the first day of a new month and they do good for a couple of days, but then maybe Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they 
go crazy. They end up eating a whole bunch of junk food on all of those days. So then they think, oh, I screwed up. So I'm just gonna start again next month. The same thing can be done in finances. So a lot of people will create their budget and then within a first, the first few days or even the first couple of weeks, they mess up or they go over budget. So then they end up throwing that budget out completely for the rest of the month and decide that they'll start the following month. That is absolutely not necessary because what that is going to do is just, you're gonna end up repeating yourself first of all and just doing that every single month. But also you are giving yourself an excuse to go over budget in every single category and that just doesn't need to happen. If you watch my videos, especially my spending update videos, then you know every single month I go over budget in one category or more, typically more. And that's okay. I'm not trying to be perfect. That's not the point here. The point is that I have a general range that I want to stay in, but sometimes I go over budget. And just because I go over budget, it doesn't mean I need to just say F it to everything else and just spend money in all the categories. I know that some months I will go over budget in one category or the other, and that's just what has happened, but that doesn't mean everything is messed up. I'm still making progress toward my goals. I'm aware of where my money is going. And then the following month I can adjust for that and repeat. So definitely don't treat your money as an all or nothing thing. It's okay if you go over budget, it's okay if you have a few weeks of the year, a few months of the year where things are rough and you're spending way too much money. Just keep on following that budget as best as you can. Keep on making that budget and just continue to do the best that you can in regards to your finances. Mistake number four is not choosing and sticking to a debt payoff method. I've talked about this in my video about how to pay off debt faster. This is so important. Of course, this applies to you if you are in debt, particularly if you have multiple loans that you need to pay for. So maybe you have credit card debt, you have your car, you have student loans, etc. It is very wise to choose a payment method. So you have the debt snowball, which is where you pay the lowest balance first, and then you pay the minimum payments on everything else. You have the debt avalanche where you're paying the loan with the highest interest rate first and putting all your focus there and paying the minimum on everything else. The third one is kind of one that I think is a good one, but it's paying the loan with the highest minimum payment so you can free up a large chunk of money and then focus on that one, pay the minimum on everything else and then roll that over into the next one after that. So they're all quite similar, but have different aspects to them. Personally, I follow the debt avalanche method, but this is not the best method to choose for everybody. So if you're somebody who wants wins more quickly, so you're gonna be paying off loans more frequently, then go with the debt snowball. If you want to pay off your loans quicker and you're okay with you know, not paying off a loan as quickly as you would with the snowball method, then go with the avalanche. That will save you a lot of money. But the important thing here is that you're choosing one of them and sticking to it because otherwise you probably won't make that much progress on your debt or it's just gonna slow things down and hinder your progress. I've also seen this with my clients and just people in my everyday life. I've talked about, I talked about this in the other video too, but you know, people will pay a lot for all of their loans and it feels like they're putting so much to their debt, but they're not making any progress because they're focusing on the wrong things. Of course, it's amazing that you are putting extra money to your debts, but you're not gonna end up making progress as you would with one of those methods because it's completely disorganized. You're not following a plan and you'll definitely start to see the results once you choose one of those methods and actually stick to it. Mistake number five is not asking for lower rates and or discounts. Again, this applies to you if you have debt or any large bills. One of the first things that I have my clients do if they have credit card debt, especially multiple credit cards, is call their lenders and ask for a lower interest rate. So if you are at 20 point something or even 19.99% on a credit card, obviously that's really, really high. I highly suggest you call your lender and ask for a lower rate. Nine times out of 10, they will say yes, because that was my experience. That's been the experience I've seen with all of my clients. And sometimes they'll say no, but that's okay. Just move on to the next credit card or just accept what it is. But that will help you to save so much money and you'll also pay off your debt a lot quicker. Now in regards to discounts, I'm not necessarily saying you should go to the store and ask for 10% off or at a restaurant. I mean, you could do that if you really want to. I personally do not. But more so if you have bills such as medical bills. I've talked about this before, but I've had 
large medical bills or at least large for me and it was something that I of course I'm gonna see if I can get a discount on instead of paying the full thing immediately so I called the hospital or I called whoever it was that was giving me this bill I asked for a discount and I ended up getting a discount so this may look different depending on what you're going through or what your situation is so my situation actually was a COVID-19 relief, so there was a discount because of that. I offered to pay in full. They did not give a discount for that, but oftentimes that does work. I also remember many years ago when I was making a very small income, I had a large medical bill that at the time was basically impossible for me to pay, so I qualified for the low income scale that was offered through this, this medical company and I submitted a form and it decreased my balance by I, I think like $600. I ended up paying like 50 or something and it was a 700 something dollar bill. So it was a huge decrease. It literally like saved my financial situation. So always ask, do not be afraid. The worst that they can say is no and then you can figure out a plan from there. Mistake number six is assuming that all pre-approvals for credit cards are a guarantee. Now, the reason I wanted to bring this up is because I've heard this happening a couple of times. I've also seen it on Reddit where people think that just because you have a pre-approval, there's a couple of things with this. So sometimes you get pre-approvals in the mail. I get these all the time. It's from a credit card company and they're like, Layla, you've been pre-approved for so-and-so credit card. I've heard of people who always will end up applying for these credit cards because they think that you're like supposed to, like you, this is a good thing for you, but it may not be. So that's the first thing. Just because you're pre-approved for a card and you get something in the mail or an email, it does not mean you should or need to sign up for that or apply for that credit card. The second thing with that is just because you're pre-approved, this is just an estimate. So it's not a guarantee that you will be approved for the credit card. You definitely need to do your research first, make sure you're in a good situation. If you, if you do want to get this credit card, make sure your credit score is looking healthy, you haven't opened a card recently, and then make that decision. Something that's common on the Credit Karma app is they will display a list of pre-approved cards. And if you look at the reviews on there, at least from what I see on my app, I'm approved for like eight different, pre-approved for eight different credit cards, probably more than that. And if you look at the ratings on Credit Karma, a lot of people complain that they were pre-approved for this. This is what Credit Karma said. I, I had a great approval rate for this, but I didn't get approved. So you get a hit to your credit card and then it lowers your score even more and obviously makes it more difficult to get approved for another card. So you can't always trust those things. Yeah, it may say that you have great approval odds, but do your own research and actually look at the score that they're looking for and more details on the requirements for that card. It can get tricky. Sometimes you'll see a card and you it looks like you fall into that approval range and you still will get denied. That is just how things are sometimes. Personally, I think it's at least better to do your own research and then not get approved versus just trusting someone else's opinion and not getting approved. So yeah, those are the six random, simple, but common money mistakes that I have seen quite a bit in the financial world. Please comment down below if there's anything else, any other small mistakes that you've seen people make so that we can prevent others from making those mistakes. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.